Yaitu Profesor Dr. Muhammad Faiz Abdullah, Chairman Institute of Strategic and International Studies, ISIS Malaysia. His Excellency Dr. Kau Kim Hun, Secretary General of ASEAN. Your Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning to you all. I'm honored to be here uh, to represent ASEAN ISIS Network. Uh, to welcome you to the 37th Asia Pacific Roundtable. ASEAN ISIS is very grateful uh, to be an integral part of the APR. Thanks, of, co of course, uh, to the productive collaborations uh, with the ISIS Malaysia. For almost four decades, actually, uh, the Asia Pacific Roundtable has been leading constructive discussions on various issues affecting these regions. Uh, and I would think the role or is more significant, more important, given the current global development, as reflected in the theme of this year's roundtable, the crisis in the interregnum. If you uh, have time to look at a dictionary, one explanation of interregnum is a period of during which normal functions of government or controls are suspended. It basically highlights the critical conjectures of our situation today, when the world confronts a period of instability between established structures and also the possibility of the emergence of a new one. The wars in Ukraine and Middle East, for example, have exposed the fragility of our global security and also the incapability of the global governance uh, to maintain peace and stability. The tensions between the US and China have created an environment of distrust and uncertainty that uh, threatens our regions uh, of Asia and Pacific. On the other hand, Asia Pacific also must now deal with various emerging and new challenges, such as uh, to promote economic development further, uh, to deal with uh, inequality, to address the climate change problem, and to, or to prepare the consequences of artificial intelligence, and many more challenges. Yet, amid these challenges, actually the Asia Pacific boasts the world's fastest growing economies. Uh, fueled by innovations uh, and burgeoning middle class. The region also uh, poised to become the world's largest fintech market and potentially to shape the course of global development. So, Asia Pacific has a potential uh, to become a leader in forging new world order uh, in this transition time. The region can champion multilateralism, work towards uh, peaceful resolutions of conflict, and promote sustainable development goals that brings benefit for all. However, uh, this region, Asia Pacific, needs a platform and institutions to achieve those aspirations. And this is uh, where I think uh, ASEAN comes in. As regional institutions, ASEAN holds immense potential to shape the course of history uh, during this interregnum. Uh, despite its modest, modest size, the group is the only organization with the agency and potential to shape outcomes in the Asia Pacific and beyond. Asian commitment uh, to regional cooperation, for example, over its model of peace, for peaceful conflict resolutions on the world stage. ASEAN also has some underutilized uh, platforms that can be used to amplify the, uh, this message. For example, the East Asia Summit, uh, which basically brings together leaders uh, from East Asia and also Pacific countries. That can be a starting point uh, to discuss about uh, 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 the developments and how to find solution to the challenge. In the economic area, uh, RCEP could also promote comprehensive concept of economic security and resilience. 
uh, which actually perceive inclusive economic integration and interdependence as sources of greater prosperity, not sources of weakness. But of course, to fully realize all this potential, uh, ASEAN must address many critical issues. Uh, ASEAN countries, ASEAN member countries need to boost uh, its international, internal cohesion. ASEAN must also continue to strengthen economic integration. Uh, ASEAN need to foster deeper political ties and presence unified front on many critical issues. So in the face, face of escalating geopolitical and economic challenges, it is imperative that ASEAN adopt even more proactive stance. This, is, this isn't only about maintaining the role of uh, its role and its centrality, but also it is a call to safeguard the region's stability, peace, prosperity, and resilience. So, but, so I believe APR offer a very good and suitable platform to discuss all of this and also to promote various initiatives in the regions. So over the next two days, we will delve deeper into the complexity of the current geopolitical landscape, brainstorm the solutions to regional challenges, and also explore how Asia Pacific can contribute to a more prosperous and secure future for all. With that, uh, I would, would like to wish you all very productive discussions and I eagerly await your valuable insights and contributions at, uh, in this forum. Thank you very much.